Uh, today we have a 2001 Chevy Impala. It's the 3.4. Uh, and our check engine light's on. So we're going to go ahead and check it out, see what's going on. Uh, I've already scanned this, off, but I'm just going to go through it with you just so you can see what I saw. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and try to repair it. So we'll bring you on in and then we'll get started. Now our check engine light's on. See that there. So we're going to go ahead and scan it and figure out what's going on here. Let's get our scan tool. Okay, let's enter the vehicle. I believe this one has an auto, it finds it. All right, turn off the key, 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn the key on, and it says to hit enter. Chevy Impala 3.4, yes this is correct. Press enter. Okay, so it's reading all our codes. Let's go down and see what we have here. There's a few codes that are on this thing. Some of them are the same ones. So it's in our oxygen sensor, which once we get all this figured out, our, our right now our um, our fuel pump's acting weird, so that might be causing that some weird stuff up there. There's our fuel pump circuit, and if you look at the fuel gauge, oops, let's see if I can get you the picture here. It's showing it's full. I think we have maybe about two gallons of gas in here, so that's all messed up. Okay, so we're going to replace the fuel pump and then we're getting a random engine misfire. This could be also because of the fuel pump. Um, there's a fuel lever sensor, it's saying that's bad. We know that, so we're going to replace the fuel pump with that. Same thing, random misfire. So these are pretty similar. So before it was actually showing something with like the fuel fumes now it's not doing that so it's acting really weird so I bought a new gas cap for it so we're gonna replace that I bought a new fuel pump we're gonna replace that we're gonna put a new fuel uh, filter on it probably won't show that in this video um, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to replace the fuel pump uh, and then the steps to get that going and then we'll go ahead and then we'll go ahead and reset this out and then we'll go and check it again once we're done with all the work. So we're going to turn the key off now. Let's just get out of here. And exit. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start up the vehicle and we want to uh, depressurize the, the fuel system. In order to do that, we need to pull the fuel relay. Which is located over here. So the relay is located in here. You can see that fuel pump right here. So I'm going to go and take off. Push down on the one little tab and then it comes out. I'm going to pull that relay out. And then you're going to hear the car die. That's basically all you got to do. Once you're done, once you turn off the key, and let's put the relay back in there. So just turn off the key. Let's go ahead and put that relay back in there and close this back up. There we go. Purchase a brand new fuel pump online. Comes with the new gasket, and then we have to wire this little bad boy in here. And it comes with the floater and everything. Got it pretty cheap. I was under 50 bucks. We wanted like 195 around here. 
I've got it online. Also got a new um, fuel tank lock ring because a lot of those the, when you replace these they tell you you have to cut a certain section of it off like break off one of the little rods that are sticking up so I'm just gonna put a whole new one in there I think this one was like under fourteen dollars or something like that online as well I'm gonna replace the fuel filter because we're replacing the um, fuel pump that'll be in another video And then we got a new gas cap, which I'm just gonna go ahead and take the other one off and put this one on. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. This is the old cap. And the seal does look kind of a little bit like it's not, like it shrank a little bit. So, go ahead and replace that. That's pretty simple. And then, I also bought some new um, retaining clips for the for the fuel lines. Um, when you when you pull your old fuel pump out. It's going to have some of these clips on here. These little clips, if you can see them on there. It's going to have them on here on the old pump. You got to take those off carefully. And since those are the original ones, I just ordered these just in case because in case those are real brittle because they're made out of plastic, they might break. So I just bought new ones just in case. We're going to replace them. I'm going to replace them anyways. I don't want to have any issues with that. So we did buy new clips. Got these online pretty cheap. I think it was like four bucks for a set of uh, six. Um, I think I only need maybe three on there. I'm not sure, but um, I still I, I bought them. I got them. I think these ones were through Amazon. I think I got the filter, this, and possibly this. I bought them all, and I got free shipping. I think if you spend over twenty five dollars, but it's got to be through an Amazon seller. So got that. And then you're gonna and then you're gonna probably need some tools um, like crimping tool something to strip the wire for, for the fuel pump, maybe a little bit of black tape, and then either a, a, like a long screwdriver or something to bang on because we're going to have to take that ring off, the fuel um, lock ring, and it's kind of, it looks like it's kind of rusted on there, so we're going to have to try to get that out, um, and then uh, maybe like a, a 10 millimeter socket with either like a drill or, or a ratchet so we can take the cover off where this is at. And I'm going to show you where that's at in just a second. Oh, the fuel pump as, and the back seats, if you pull these seats down. Your fuel pump is underneath this carpet over here. So I'll pull that carpet back. Seven, there's seven uh, different uh, 10 millimeter uh, nuts here that we need to take off. So we're going to go and take that cover off. Now I've already taken this cover off before. We're gonna go ahead and just the seven. Basically, it's those right there. Put those aside. Don't lose them. And then this might be a little bit tight on yours, so just get something underneath it to kind of pry it. This one's already been pried loose. And then you just pick a ticket off. Just move it to the side. And then now we have the fuel pump in here. And we're gonna have to disconnect it. Disconnect these lines here. Do is we wanna unclip these connectors. Just be as careful as you can sliding it out. You don't wanna break the tabs. So the first one, that one's pretty simple. You just lift up on this little piece right here and it, and it slides right back. lift up this little tab and then, then slide it that way okay now the next one this one here looks like it has a little lock mechanism it's like a little it just goes into a slot 
that locks in the harness. So you want to lift that up, and then, same thing, you pull back on this little section here, and then that harness should just slide back. I believe this is the one that we need to wire in. Now, they, I guess they, they send you another one because I guess they break. They commonly break on these for some reason. So they, they made them a little bit different for you to wire these in now. See that? Okay, so that's that. Got those two. And then now we need to unplug the fuel lines, all three of these. Now, it's really dirty. Now, if you want to mark them, just so you know, like one, two, three, that's probably suggested just so you don't put the wrong one in the wrong spot. So that's what I'm going to do in a second. Well, it, looks like, it looks like somebody marked them with something here, but I'm going to mark them with a piece of tape with numbers on them. This one being one, this one being two. Just so we don't put them in the wrong spot. Now the next thing would be, it looks like it has a some kind of a clip right here. You push that down and I believe it just it should just slide out. Okay. So the middle one here, you have to like push down on the middle and then try to pull it out at the same time. It's really hard to do. Get that one out of the way. Then these ones you can kind of turn. So then that way you can try to pinch both sides at the same time. And then get it out. But to squish both of these at the same time is really hard. There it is. Okay, that one was really hard. This one I just kind of took my screwdriver and I kind of pushed the back end of it. Because you have to actually like squeeze the connector in order for this to for you to be able to um, in order for you to be able to take it off. And then when you take the clips off, you gotta actually like push these little tabs back the other way. So let me show you. So each one of these things has a little, has a little setup like that on each side. So you have to actually like squeeze those to be able to pull the pull the fuel, whole fuel line out. And once you got the fuel line out, then you have to you have to like put your screwdriver right in here and then pull back because you'll see when when it's sitting in there, there's actually like a little lip where it locks onto. You push those things back out, and then you slide the little, little retaining clip off. But it's kind of hard to get underneath it because you can't get your fingers under there to, to actually squeeze it. So that's the hardest part. Same thing on this side. Like I can't really get my fingers in there to squeeze it. Didn't underneath it to try to act like I'm squeezing it. There it is. So I just took my screwdriver underneath it and caught a little piece of it. Same thing, kind of like in the squeeze and push the, the top one down and then try to pull the cable at the same time. You almost need three hands. So I got that one out. Okay, so all those three are there and they're all labeled. One, two, three. Now, we want to move these cables out of the way a little bit. So that we could just put our rag on them. We want them. And so then now this is the this is the retaining ring. And when you put the new the new um, fuel pump in there, you have to take, I think it's either, I think you need to take one of these out. I don't know if you need to take out both. So you gotta take some pliers and actually break it off. And it's rusted, so it'll probably break off. But I don't want to have to do that. 
So that's why I bought a new one. So now to take this one off, we need to try to get in here. There it is. So there's a there's a little notch out on the outside of the of the actual um, ring. That's the part you want to hit. Okay. So now Make sure to get all that crap out of it. We don't want any of that stuff going into our into our uh, tank. I'm gonna slowly try to get this out. There's the fuel ring. So this is the notch I was telling you about right here. Just hit one of these notches, and then you, it's gonna spin like that, and then it unlocks it. That's that one place that and then now fuel pump should completely come out with a filter you know what this thing does have a lot of gas in there I didn't think it had any but it's not full Probably about halfway. So just kind of tilt this and try to let some of that gas go back in the in the tank. And there's there's the new rubber seal. This thing here. Replace that too. Take this tank out. So this is the fuel clips that we took off. You can reuse those. I could, I could actually reuse this if I wanted to, but I want to put new ones on there. And we just want to make sure our, that they're the same. Okay. The only difference is that plug on the top, like I was telling you. That one right there. That's the one we're going to have to wire in with this to here. So I'm, we'll go ahead and put the new seal, kind of like the one that this one is. We're just going to slide it in there. And just make sure you take off this plastic deal here. There we go. And then we'll just put that around there. And then that will just go all the way up. Make sure that these wires stay right in here. There's like little places where they lock into place. Set that seal all the way to the top. That'll go like that. And then our new lock ring. Looks exactly like the other one, except it doesn't have those things we need to cut off, which is going to be nice. You don't have to mess with that. Just see the way this thing sits. I'll look at the other one right now. See, because there's a there's actually a raised area. I think this goes down like that. Let's go into the car and check stuff with us. Okay, so I just covered up the tank just so I wouldn't get anything, any debris inside inside the, uh, the gas tank. Odd little rust things all along the edge of this. I'm gonna have to be real careful. It doesn't get into our our tank. That piece was really rusted bad on there. I just clean the edge and try not to get any debris in the in the tank. So now we're gonna wire this thing in. So we don't need the wires to be super long because obviously you see these ones are short. So we're just gonna we're gonna trim them. Give ourselves, I don't know, I have enough room to plug it in. And we could just bury the rest of the wires in there. So I'm just gonna give myself a couple inches. So all we're going to do is we're just going to strip all these wires real quick.
So I went ahead and stripped all the wires. I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. Because we're going to stick them in these little, they're called butt connectors. Now if you look at the wires, all of them are almost the same thickness except for the, the purple one. So, well no, actually the purple one and this last black one, these ones are real thin. So these ones you would use the, the smaller, which is all the red ones. for the meanwhile till we get to that point. I'll do the two red ones first because they're the thinner wires. I mean, if you had, all, if you didn't have these connectors, if you had just the um, all blue ones, you could just just uh, peel it back a little bit more on the on the insulation, and then just fold it over. That would work too. Okay. So now, now we need to get in here and figure out which wires are what. So I'm just gonna put that there. Try to pull this out as much as you can. Okay, so we'll do the purple one first because we know that that's the correct one. That'd probably be a good idea like I did, just cover the gas tank up while you're stripping that insulation. You don't want you don't want to be dropping that insulation down in that um in that area there. Especially when you're stripping the stuff back. Little cables fall everywhere. Okay. Now this one here. I'm going to assume that's the gray wire because it's lighter than everything else. So I'm going to put that one on the gray one. It actually is kind of faded almost into a brown. <laughs> but it's the lightest one, so it's got to be the gray. And now we're left with the last two, which one is, one's a stripe. So it came with instructions, wow, can you believe that? Okay. Okay guys, so on the instructions here, it pretty much tells us, like if your car has a black with a white or orange with black or blue with yellow, because this these pumps work with different cars it will go to this top harness this top one on the harness which is this one here which is letter C I guess on here which would be it's the sender signal so this one is going to go to the one that has the white stripe let's get rid of this filter ready
last was basically black, that would go to the last one, which is down here on the harness. So if I wouldn't have known if that was the gray one because the colors kind of faded, if I would have did the other three, I would have figured out that was the last one, so it would be kind of easy. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually tape these wires. So they're icing insulated. Sorry it's taking me so long. I don't usually work with gloves when I'm doing electronics, but I want to get my hands all dirty from this car. Okay. So now we're going to take our pump and then we're going to figure out, okay, this thing here looks like it goes like this. So the lip side will go up like that. The part that's concave down goes down okay and that's how the other one was sitting in there like that this tells me that so in actuality I would you really have to just look at those alignments if you look at the little notch outs if I do it the other way the notch outs would be backwards so, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully remove this rag so we don't get any debris in there and then we're going to slowly put this pump in there. Get that gasket, get back up there. Get it in. And then we just want to align it the exact way that it was aligned before. With, the, um, with all these facing that way. Okay. Now these caps are going to come off, so let's just take those off. There's uh, right here on the on the pump. There's like a little, like a little um, plastic square that actually tells you where it's lined up, where it's supposed to line up. It's really neat. I know that. Didn't notice that. So then we're gonna get this. This this has to go on here. So I'm gonna try to slide that on there. Semi locked it in there with my hands, but it's still got to go a little bit further in. You got to turn it a little bit more. It has like a, a little lock spot on there. Let's see if we can just turn it. I think you need to tap it. that to be nice and locked because you don't want any vapors coming out of there. Just about looks to be almost completely locked in there. It's a little bit more. There it goes. You 
want to make sure when you're looking in here, you're looking in here, maybe you can see in here, but the, um, the spot where this thing locks into this thing here, you want to make sure that little spot that locks in, it goes all the way in, okay? And then now it's all about just, I'm going to plug this harness in. This one will just tuck the wire we can down. On these ones, it has a little lock thing on here. You gotta pull that out first. Right there, that's this. This part has to be pulled up. And then it'll let you put it in. And then now we're just gonna put our little lock deals on here, the little clips. Take them. So these are the new ones. So, you know, if you look at them, they go in like this. I think they're different sizes. Yeah, they are. There's like a big one. Yeah, they're different sizes. So you guys gotta make sure you look at that. The biggest one is the one all the way in the back. Towards the back of the car. And you wanna make sure to line those up with the little clip part to line up when you plug it in. Okay, so the two, the, the fatter one goes on the outside. It did come with a, two different sets. It came with like a, a, a thicker one and then a smaller one. see it on here this is the original one for the first one right here so I'm gonna go ahead and put I'm gonna put this one on here there it goes now the middle one doesn't use one it has a different locking system I guess on that one so I'm gonna put the middle one in first just snaps into place then we're gonna put this other one here now you gotta mind where the clips supposed to go on here there's an opening so just turn the clip accordingly to the to the um, to the um, hose and then just snap it into place same thing with this last one just turn the turn the clip and line it up you'll see what I'm talking about when you get in there those are all in there now. And that's pretty much it. Now we just put the cover back on. And we're done. I don't think it does. out of here and then we'll go and start up the car and see if the float started working like it's supposed to replace the fuel pump now we're gonna go ahead and just uh, clear the um, the codes here before we start it up so we're gonna go ahead and go back in here into diagnostics I need to turn the key off 10 seconds I don't even have the key in there Back in here again. Hit enter. It's going to look for it. So we haven't cleared anything out of here, just so you can see. These are the codes, same codes that it showed earlier the oxygen sensor, the fuel pump. 
preliminary random misfire probably because the fuel pump and then the fuel sensor leveler okay so we're gonna get out of here we're gonna back up we're gonna erase the codes yes we want to erase them enter turn on the key with the engine off which it already is we're gonna do that one first so in this in this car there's actually two sections you need to erase there's the, I believe it was the OBD2 or something. Okay, so it's saying zero code remaining. Let's go back. And then we'll do the engine code. Release that too. Clear that out. So there's zero remaining codes. Good. So we're going to get out of here. Yes, we want to get out. I'm done with that. So now we're going to start the vehicle up. So we'll see if we get any any misfires or anything. And open up my garage door so I don't get smoked out of here. We have other issues on this car. Uh, our check engine's flashing. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and, and go ahead and diagnose it right now. See what's going on with that. This thing was bogging out really bad uh, before, but now it's not bogging out. So and we do have another issue on this car. Our check engine light's still coming on. It might be the O2 sensor. So we're going to go ahead and check that. But fuel pump's working. We'll get back to you and see if it's still showing up on here. So we're gonna go ahead and scan this again and see what it's what it's what's showing up on here. Turn the key off for 10 seconds. Time. See what it's sh what's showing up here. Might still have a misfire on here for something else. We still haven't given this thing a tune-up. Yep, so we got an engine misfire. That's it. That's the only thing that's popping up. That oxygen sensor didn't pop up. Um, the fuel thing didn't pop up, so that did fix that problem. Now we're just gonna go and, now we have to diagnose to see why we got a random uh, misfire on here. Maybe replace the plugs, wires, stuff like that. But, um, Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, our, ga our gas tank was full, so it is working. So we're good to go. So now the car is actually running a little bit smoother, um, and the oxygen sensor uh, light's not coming on, so we're good to go there. Thanks for watching.